A woman is happily riding her boat. Three weeks later, we come to see Matt who introduces her as his wife, Elizabeth, who got launched into the air and hit her head while taking part in a powerboat race. He says that he wasn't in town when the accident happened, and they haven't been talking much either. He wishes for her get back up from her coma, since she's got his attention now. Right then, he gets a call from his daughter, Scotty's school. The teachers show him Scotty's picture book filled with photos of her mom in the hospital. They understand that they're going through a hard time, but they ask ask him to have a talk with his daughter. After the meeting, he questions Scotty about showing pictures of her mom for her art project, and Scotty quotes reading about some famous photographer who did the same thing. Matt objects, stating what's happening with her mom is private and that she is not a photographer. He takes her back home, and he tells us that the last time he took care of Scotty was when she was three, and now she is ten, and he doesn't have a clue as to what he's supposed to do. Back home, Matt gets a call from the mother of Lonnie, Scotty's classmate. She complains about Scotty being mean to Lonnie, and tells Matt that Scotty should come apologize, or else she will take the matter up with the dean. Matt gets her address, and they head over to Lonnie's place. Scotty apologizes to Lonnie, but her mom doesn't think she's sorry enough. Matt confirms with Scotty, and after a couple of head nods, Lonnie's mom accepts the apology. As Matt and Scotty leave, Lonnie's mom wishes him good luck on the sale. She follows up mentioning how his decision will have a major impact on Hawaii's real estate, particularly in Kauai. Matt tells us that the whole state is following him about the sale of 25,000 acres on Kauai. Their family has owned since the 1860s. We see him working for the sale, and he mentions that most of his cousins are broke, and this sale will definitely make them rich. He says that his family will meet up in six days to decide on the buyer, and Matt says that ever since his father died, he became the sole trustee of the property. Matt goes on to explain that his great-great-grandmother was Princess Margaret, one of the last last direct descendants of King Kamehameha. She was supposed to marry her cousin, but she fell in love with Edward King, a banker, and through his land deals and her inheritance, their descendants came to own such a fortune. But now, something called rule against perpetuities is forcing them to dissolve their family trust, and they are going to sell their last part of Hawaiian land. Matt continues to work in his office and says that unlike his cousins, he never touched his trust money and only lives on his income from his law practice. On the day of the meetup, Matt gets notified about his cousins reaching the office. Matt explains that he specializes in real estate transaction laws, so a few of his more engaged cousins come to analyze the bids with him. Matt shows us the proposals being the same for hotels, shopping centers, condos, and golf courses, and a group from Chicago is offering them half a billion dollars, but they are leaning towards a lower bidder named Don Holitzer, who's from Kauai and he made a fortune in Silicon Valley. After the meeting, Matt thinks about Elizabeth. He tells himself that she'll make it out okay and visits the hospital. On his way, he thinks how after the sale, he and Elizabeth shall get back to how things were. He promises to be a better father and a better husband, but the doctor doesn't have good news for him. He tells Matt that his wife's condition is deteriorating and that the machines are keeping her alive. The doctor apologizes and mentions that as per his legal obligation, they have to decide when to take her off the machines. The doctor mentions how Elizabeth has a big life and with all her friends, he has to start now to let them say their goodbyes, so they'll be ready. When the time comes in a few days, Matt is devastated, and he walks out to reach the room where his wife is in. As he enters, he finds his wife's friends, Kai and Mark there. Kai applies makeup on Elizabeth, and Mark asks him about her progress. Matt feigns ignorance, and lies to them that Elizabeth's state is still the same. The next day, Matt takes Scotty to Ocean Outrigger Club. He sits by the beach and watches Scotty take a swim in the ocean. They have their breakfast later, and they come across Troy, who talks about visiting Elizabeth the previous week, and goes to mention how he saw her toes move. Matt opens up how his wife was supposed to be the one driving the boat, and Troy counters, stating that the ocean was really rough that day, and what happened to his wife could have happened to him too. Hearing their conversation, Scotty leaves running in tears. Matt follows her out and asks her not to pay mind to Troy. Matt suggests they get on a plane to Big Island to see her sister. Scotty loves the idea, and as they leave the club, Scotty Scotty shows Troy the middle finger. They get on the plane to Big Island and reach the Hawaii Pacific Institute late at night. The warden takes them to Alexandra's room, but she isn't there. The roommate tells them that she is outside, so they head out to find Alexandra high on drugs. And the next day, Matt cooks some eggs for Scotty, but she hates eggs. And just then Alexandra comes down and he offers her the eggs, but she gets up and leaves outside. Alexandra gets in the pool, and Matt explains to her the situation about Elizabeth, and according to her will, 
well, they'll have to let her go. Alexandra breaks down crying and leaves, asking why he just told her now. Matt follows her inside and reveals how he just found out the previous day. He asks her to be with him since they have to break the news to their family and friends. But Alexandra doesn't like the idea of going around telling people that her mom is gonna die. Matt tells Alexandra that whatever she fought with her mom over Christmas, she has to drop it. And Alexandra finds that Matt doesn't have a clue of why they fought and reveals that her mom was cheating on him. Alexandra cries saying how she found her mom with a guy when she came home for Christmas and they fought over it. She left for school and wanted to call him and tell everything. But then the accident happened and she waited for her to wake up. Alexandra hates how Matt was so busy with work not to notice anything and he asks her for more details since they cannot assume anything. Alexandra feels gross just thinking about it and Matt is so angry and he asks about the guy but Alexandra doesn't know who he was. He tells her to watch Scotty and leaves the house running. He runs and runs until he reaches a house. He goes inside calling for Kai and Mark. They find something is amiss and Matt gets right to the point and asks Kai who his wife was seeing. Kai doesn't feel like telling him since Elizabeth is not here to defend herself and Matt asks if she was still seeing him when the accident happened. Mark nods his head as Kai yells at him since he is Elizabeth's friend, but he is Matt's friend too. He replies and Matt reveals that Elizabeth's gonna die and how they're going to pull the plug. He was going to tell them yesterday, but it had to happen and he yells at Kai that she was applying makeup to a corpse. Kai breaks down in tears hearing this and Matt asks her did Elizabeth love the guy. Kai says she was crazy about him and was planning to get a divorce. Matt cannot hear any further and leaves. Mark follows him to say the guy's name is Brian Spear. On his way back, Matt cries and gets himself together. When he reaches home, he finds his daughters chatting with Sid, Alexandra's friend. Matt asks them to get ready to go meet their grandparents, and Alexandra says that Sid is coming with too. Matt says it's a family matter, and Sid's gonna be bored, but Alexandra says he's gonna stick along. They first break the news to Elizabeth's father, Scott, who goes saying how Elizabeth was strong and brave. He yells at Matt for not using his wealth to make her life more thrilling, and he tells it was bad of Alexandra to fight with her mom. Scott takes a minute to accept the situation, and he goes inside to bring his wife, Alice. Scott introduces Matt and Alexandra, and he explains to Alice about visiting Elizabeth in the Queen Hospital. Alice doesn't have a good memory and feels excited to meet Queen Elizabeth. Hearing her say that, Sid starts laughing and Scott punches him in the face. On their way back, Alexandra takes a closer look at Sid and Matt asks them not to be so touchy around him. Sid says maybe that is why his wife cheated on him. Matt stops the car and points at Sid saying he really looks like a guy who gets punched a lot. Right then, Alexandra tells Matt that she knows where the guy stays, and on their way, she finds that Matt only found his name and nothing else. And soon, they reach the house which Alexandra points out where she met her mom with Brian. Matt doesn't feel like doing anything, and they leave the spot soon but on their way, Alexandra asks him to stop the car. She points towards a sign, and Matt sees a real estate signboard with Brian Spears' picture and phone number. Later that night, Matt calls the number and leaves a voicemail with a false name saying he was interested in buying the house. The next day, Matt takes the girls to the hospital, and he asks them to wait outside and goes in first. He gives a piece of his mind to Elizabeth with how hard she made his life, and even when she is in this condition, she is making his life difficult. After telling her that he too was thinking about getting a divorce, he calls the girls in, and Alexandra finally meets her mom. She starts with apologizing for fighting with her and goes on to the bad parts. Matt spanks her to stop her from continuing and sends Scotty outside to go look for Sid. Matt asks Alexandra not to talk about those things in front of Scotty and asks her to say something else. Alexandra talks about how she always wanted to be like her mom and sometime later, Sid is in with them and Matt gets a call from the real estate. He shows the phone to Alexandra and she takes the call, speaking as his assistant. After the call, she tells Matt that Brian will be in Kauai next week. The next time we see Matt, he is in a gathering with all their friends. He tells them that he's called them all to explain about Elizabeth's condition and according to her wishes, they have decided to take her off life support. He thanks everyone for being there for her and asks them to go meet her soon. That night, Alexandra confronts Matt over his decision to go see Brian. He tells her that her mom would have wanted for him to visit her and he cannot escape if they met face to face. Alexandra wants to go with him but Matt denies. She says that they all can go since it will be a good break and we see them on a plane to Kauai the next day. On their way out the airport, they come across cousin Ralph and he starts talking about their decision for the sale. He offers them a ride and they take
take him up on it. On their way, Matt asks to visit their land and they head their way, since Cousin Ralph's got time all right. They soon reach a viewpoint. Cousin Ralph feels like joining the other cousins who don't want to sell, but it's just sitting there, and that way the whole world can enjoy it too. Matt shows the girls the land owned by their great-great-grandmother, and Alexandra mentions how they used to camp there a lot. They head back and as they chicken the hotel, Matt asks the front desk if someone by the name Brian Spear checked in, but finds he isn't there. Matt goes out to find the kids on the beach and asks them to join him for a walk. He shares with them how he met their mother and some other stories of her adventures. That night, Matt has trouble sleeping and goes to check in on Sid and asks his opinion on how to handle his daughters. Matt learns about Sid being a smart kid and how he lost his father just a couple months ago. With all that, Matt wishes him a good night and leaves. The next morning, Matt goes for a run by the beach and comes across Brian, running past him in the opposite direction. Matt turns around and chases after him. He follows him to find Brian entering a cottage and soon finds a woman and two kids come out. Sometime later, Matt is by the beach in front of the cottage. He found Brian. Soon he finds the woman and her kids come out. As the woman watches her kids play in the water, Matt leaves to talk with her. He starts a casual conversation with her about the kids and how he too has his hands full with his daughters. He reveals that they're here on a break since his wife is in the hospital. The woman says that her husband is here on work and they wanted to make a vacation out of it. They know the owner Hugh King and Matt mentions he knows him too and she goes to say that he might know her husband Brian Spear too in that case. Matt denies meeting him and right then Scotty comes out of the water shouting that something bit her and Matt takes his leave. After that Matt takes the kids to a restaurant where he finds his elder cousin Hugh. Matt tells the kids to start ordering as he goes towards him. Hugh is surprised to find Matt who explains how he came here with the kids for a break from the hospital. Matt then asks Hugh about the people staying in the cottage and learns that Brian is the brother-in-law of Don Holitzer, who they are going to sell their land. Hugh mentions how Brian is pretty determined, and after the sale, all the transactions will be handled by him. Matt mentions that'll happen only if they sell to him, and Hugh worries since they all want to sell to Don. Matt gets back to the kids and cannot believe what's going on around him. After that, they go back walking, and Matt reveals that the woman he was talking with by the beach is Brian's wife. Alexandra is surprised to hear that, and as Matt tells her that he knows where they are staying, Alexandra says that they need to go there to confront the guy. So, they reach the cottage, and Sid takes Scotty out as Matt and Alexandra go in. They notice the woman outside, and Matt introduces himself and Alexandra. They learn the woman's name is Julie Spear. She recognizes his name from the newspapers and knew that he might know her husband. Right then, Brian walks out and Matt introduces himself following. He says that he might know his wife, Elizabeth. Brian is speechless as Julie goes in to get their drinks. Matt starts with a fuck you Brian and goes to explain Elizabeth's condition. He asks Brian to go meet her before they pull the plug. Alexandra couldn't believe that her mom went for that guy but Brian asks them to leave. Just then, Julie comes out with the drinks and Matt reminisces about staying at the cabin when he was kid. So Alexandra proposes the ladies talk out there while Brian and Matt take a look around inside the cabin. As soon as they head inside, Matt asks Brian how they met and he learns that Brian didn't want Elizabeth get a divorce since he didn't love her. Matt tells him that Elizabeth is at the Queen's Hospital and calls Alexandra to leave. As Julie bids them goodbye, Matt kisses her on the lips and walks out. Julie is stunned and we see Matt and the kids back on the plane. Alexandra asks Matt if Brian will come and he has no idea if he might. Alexandra says that the only person they now have to break the news to is Scotty. Matt says that he asked the doctors to help him with that and as he said they visit the hospital the next day. The doctor explains to Scotty that Elizabeth is going to die soon and Matt comforts Scotty. Soon, Scott and Alice come to visit Elizabeth. Scott asks Matt about the sale and feels it to be such an irony with him going into fortune while his daughter is in such misfortune since she is such a devoted wife. Alexandra and Sid speak up for Matt and they leave the room for Scott and Alice. The next day is the day of the family meeting where all the members take a vote to decide on the buyer. Elder cousin Hugh counts the votes. He reveals that Don Holitzer came in first and asks Matt to sign the deal to make it official. But Matt has a change of mind since they did nothing to own this land and it was entrusted to them and he doesn't want to sell it to anyone. Hugh says he should take a few days to decide since a lot is on his plate right now and they only have seven years until the trust is dissolved. Matt says then he has seven years to figure out how they can keep it. Hugh mentions that they are ready to sue him but they are family. Matt explains that the land they own is what ties them together and if they're feeling like
like suing him, then they are free to do so. Hugh accepts his decision and calls everyone, since Matt has something to say to them. Matt stands to address the family, and we transition back to the hospital, where Matt and the kids are waiting. They hear a knock on the door, and are surprised to find Julie walking in with flowers in her hand. Matt thanks her for coming, and she explains how they have been on her mind for the past few days. Scotty asks Julie if she is a friend of her mom's. Julie says no, but she might have known about her. Right then, Sid gets up and asks Alexandra and Scotty to join him to the cafeteria. Julie tells Matt that she found out about the affair after they left that day, since Brian was acting weird. She wants to talk to Julie and goes to say that she forgives her for trying to take Brian away and breaking her family. She starts crying and Matt feels that's enough. He takes Julie away and says that Brian didn't love Elizabeth. Julie leaves after saying that's why she came. After this, Matt goes ahead to kiss Elizabeth and bids her goodbye. Alexandra says her farewell as well and comes to take Scotty. The next we see them. They are on a boat as Matt drops Elizabeth's ashes in the ocean. Following this, we see Matt and the girls on the couch at their home eating ice cream. Let me know what you think about this movie called The Descendants, and I shall see you again with another story like this. Until then, this is your host for Movie Movie Recap signing off.